Hey, pretty girl club. So I'm on my way home from work. And I was just thinking to myself about how colorism was introduced to me in the first place. And I noticed that every time colorism has been mentioned in my life, that it has always been an unambiguous black woman. It has always been an un- unambiguous black woman or person. The first time I think I ever remember somebody pointing out my skin complexion was my grandmother. I think it was her. I think she was the first one. Um, yeah. So, I don't know if y'all remember my story time before when I told y'all I stayed with my grandmother for a little while while my father was switching duty stations. And she lived in like, I call it the hood but it's like more country than, it's the hood, it's the country, it's both of them at the same time. South Carolina, let's just say that. So, very monoracial community, very small town. And here I am with my ambiguous looking ass, but I'm still monoracial though, but I just look a little bit different. And I'm a little bit lighter than everybody else, so. I got um, ostracized because of this. The guys would praise me while the females would not like me. But yeah, so, you know, I got all this attention. And uh, this is one around the time where I started experimenting with makeup and stuff. Because I was playing with makeup and things like that. What, you know, what looks good on me and stuff like that. And I remember one day doing my makeup in my grandma's bathroom and she walked past the bathroom see me doing my makeup (laughs) and she was like girl you light skin you don't need all that makeup and I just I I didn't know how to respond to that because that's the first time I heard something like that but it felt very like I was just like I don't know I was confused I don't I remember not responding but looking confused like what does my skin tone have to do with me wearing makeup and because she said that it always kind of stuck with me I noticed it more that it was different than prior to her saying something like that and this is a whole new experience for me being in a monoracial environment because I grew up multicultural I just came back from where did we just come back from Hawaii I think or Japan I think it was Japan we just got back from Japan and so not only did my grandma mention it, but my little cousin, my little cousin was at least six years old at the time, looking at me and look, we went over to my aunt's house there, and he looked at me and he was like, I like your skin come, or no, he didn't say that. He was like, I like the way that you look. And I looked at him like, what do you mean by that? Like, your skin and your light. Something like to that effect, a six-year-old would say it how he was. I think he was six or seven. Old enough to know this. Notice a difference in my phenotype from the rest of them. From everybody else in the family. Because I'm really thinking how I have a lot of cousins. And I think I am... I want to say I'm the lightest one. But... Damn, am I the lightest cousin? Because mind you, my mom has five siblings and my dad also has five siblings. And they all have kids. Everybody has kids. Okay, so I'm lying. I might be the third the third lightest. I have two biracial cousins from my mom's older brother. I, I only met them one time. They don't come around as much. I forgot about them. So technically, no, I am not the lightest one because I have two biracial cousins. I I do remember meeting them before. It's just I haven't met met them since. That uncle stays in jail, so I don't hardly ever see him anyway. But, but yeah, so. And then when I was down there, I dated a guy. And his father mentioned my skin complexion. Cause we were on the phone talking and I guess he was on my MySpace. He was on my MySpace page. And um, <laughs> I 
I, I guess because we were on the phone and he was at his house on the computer and I guess his father looked at the screen and he was like who's that he was like that's my girl <laughs> and I and his father was like what's up with you and all these light-skinned girls and this is like within the span of because I only stayed with my grandmother for like three or four months it wasn't that long and prior to me staying over there I wasn't even exposed to colorism or <clears throat> my skin complexion being talked about as like as it was I'm like and so it made me do research on colorism and then y'all also I take that back that wasn't the first time I heard colorism I remember something before that when I was in Japan I think I told you guys this this was right before we moved like literally right before um and I remember we were at the on base pizza hut because they had pizza on base and if y'all lived in Okinawa Japan for my military girlies out there if y'all remember <clears throat> the spot the hangout spot called the spot on Camp Foster if you know you know but that's where I remember being and it's like a cafe slash hangout spot slash computer center for military people to just hang out and my mom was talking to me I don't remember what we were talking about but I remember her saying something to the effect of you wish you would have stayed the same complexion you were when you were born and I was born as y'all can see <clears throat> I'm sorry I'm coughing as y'all can see my skin complexion is this color right now right right now yeah but when I was born, I was lighter than this. I was born with jaundice, so that's some type of a liver condition. And I was born with it. They had to put me in the NICU and everything so I could get my color back or whatever. They had to put me in some type of a machine. And I remember my mom <laughs> was like, you wish you would have stayed that skin complexion high. And this was right before we moved to my grandma's house. And then when I moved to my grandma's house, I'm experiencing the colorism that I just explained to y'all I experienced. So this was all within a span of six months in, I'm trying to think of other things that had happened. And then the <clears throat> the amount of attention I got because of my skin complexion. Like the guys loved me, the girls didn't like me. I thought that was just because I was pretty. But I think it went deeper than that. I think not only was it was because I was pretty, it was because I was light skinned and pretty. Because if you're light skinned and pretty, and you got a body like I when I hit puberty like I have a high butt in my hips and at, at the time I was pretty I was I was skinnier so I you know I have I have a coke shake body um basically and you know that's what I call a triple threat when you have three <laughs> three things that could trigger people when it I don't I guess three characteristics about yourself or three physical traits about yourself that trigger people especially monoracial and I only notice this type of energy when I'm in a monoracial environment even when I'm in a multicultural environment the people that will treat me like that are the people who come from a monoracial environment so I deal with that at my job currently it's only the black females that are kind of like against me in a sense like they're not hanging out with me on purpose like I'm supposed to care that I feel or they're trying to make me feel left out I guess I'm supposed to feel left out because I don't sit with them whatever I don't really care <clears throat> I actually don't care at all meanwhile all the guys so So it's like all of the girls are against me. Meanwhile, all the guys are treating me like a princess in there. Make it make sense. But I mean, <clears throat> it's just it's just flattering to me. And they really go out their way to make me feel some type of way. While the guys are just going out their way to make me feel like a princess. We have a new guy and he's up my ass. He's a white boy. White boys are up my ass no more than black dudes are at my ass. Mexicans are, the, I think, the worst. I think they're... <laughs> but I digress. So, yeah. Um, and then, 
like I said, being the lighter cousin, I got treated different when it came to my male cousins and not nothing crazy or anything. It was just they were more uh, not caring to me, but like they had more of a uh, not cared about me more, but they treated me like they little sister in a sense like they was very overprotective of me and all of that type of stuff and i would notice a difference with that versus my other cousins i'm like well i mean it's just something i did observe um and that even goes for male friendships too like people are extra overprotective of me when it, especially men in my life Sometimes it would get annoying, but I appreciated it at the same time. But it just kind of gets annoying when it's kind of overdone. Like I don't need, I don't need you to, to walk me two steps. To, like I'm good. Like it's like the little, little stuff that I know I can do myself. You know, it's just kind of one of those things. Like, <laughs> but yeah, uh, where was I? So yeah, it was just. I, I only experienced colorism and I was introduced to colorism by monoracial people. Even I remember a few years later, um, and I'm always dealing, and when it came to monoracials, I'm always dealing with it. And it's only with monoracial, and it's only with people who are darker skinned than me. Because if you're my complexion and you're monoracial, I'm not getting any of that from them. And when I think about it, when because all my best friends have been exotical or light skinned, so all of my closest friends that I can think of that I had throughout my life were exoticals. And people who I thought were my friend but ended up being a friend of me, when I think about it, were unambiguous black, dark skinned women. And it was specifically unambiguous dark skinned. When I think of all the people who stabbed me in the back, I had a one, I keep calling her a friend, but she was not a friend. She stole my boyfriend. She was basically trying to be my friend to take whatever, she was just trying to steal my boyfriend. And she stole him and I let her have him because if he, he wasn't worth shit anyway. And I could get somebody else if I wanted to. I didn't really, I was just like, fuck, this is not, you're not going to cheat on me. You could have her. I was like, I could find better anyway. She's, she can't get her own man on her own. She got to steal somebody's man. <laughs> Ugh, but yeah. Yeah, it's just like, when you're pretty, you don't worry about that type of stuff. Because you know, men try to talk to you every single day. It's like a never ending thing. Like I just, I got hit on all this week. Every time I went to the gas station or the store. So it's, it's a never ending thing. It's when it comes to the humbling tactics, when it comes to men all over you and you don't want to be bothered, you know. When it comes to just females being, just trying to make your life miserable because you look better than them and they don't know how to get their own stuff together, so they gotta make your life miserable with them. I don't have none of these extra issues when it comes to exoticals, and I never have. And I didn't even realize when I, before the exotical space was formed that there was a term for us. You know, I just always knew I was, you know, Subconsciously, I knew that people who look similar to me, I got along with better than people who are darker than me. But I just, you know, until the exotic space was formed, it made perfect sense. Everything that I've been through with certain types of people versus other types of people. So it's like, I thought maybe I wasn't hood enough. That's why I made that one video. I talked about not feeling hood enough or acting hood to fit in because I thought maybe if I did that maybe I'm not hood enough that's why the darker people don't like me I never would have thought it was because of my phenotype because I benefit because I benefit from featureism and colorism 
So that kind of puts me in the box. Like, I get thrown in and out depending on how people feel. But yeah, y'all. <laughs> like, colorism has only been brought up by unambiguous black people every single time, even present day. My boyfriend's best friend, he, anytime me or other light skin come people come around, he has to make a joke about us. It's always darker skin, unambiguous people that just have to bring it up. But I don't know. I was introduced to it by them, and they keep per keep it, they keep perpetuating colorism. So, what do you ladies think? Let me know in the comment section, and I'll talk to you guys next time. And I need to get my nails done. I know y'all looking at my nails like, girl. <laughs> I'm gonna get them done today. But yeah, I'll talk to you guys next time. Stay pretty.